we need to paint this lower unit right here. But I know that not everybody has an air compressor with a paint gun and all that stuff. So I'm gonna teach you how to do it with a can. Before I do that though, we do need to go over a couple things and you do need to understand a few things about what exactly we're doing here with a lower unit and what exactly you're gonna get out of painting your lower unit. This is the most common type of problem to have with a lower unit, except for all this. This looks like someone got into some rocks and it flung rocks up from the propeller into here and that's what all these scratches are unless they wrapped around a chain of an anchor and got that all up in here but i don't think it's that because of how clean it is here on the top but right here is the most common type of paint wear that you're going to see on a lower unit and if you look this is because this engine is getting very shallow we're getting into sand we're getting into rocks we're getting into weeds and the weeds and all that stuff is scratching all of the paint off of the lower unit this might have even gotten a pretty hard grounding and that chewed up all this stuff right here so the problem that we're trying to fix is we just want to paint this so that way the corrosion that can happen with the missing paint and the metals between the prop and the prop shaft and all this other stuff we need to have this painted we want it to look good but you need to understand that a lower unit is going through the water at you know 40 50 60 miles an hour and anything that's in the water if you're going shallow you're getting into weeds you're getting into sand even if you're not getting the actual lower unit in the sand if you are driving over sand and sand is say two three feet below the bottom of the boat there is sand being kicked up and that sand is going to be getting you know worn through here it's going to wear things out so when you go shallow like that and get into weeds it's always going to be rubbing across the case and so there is no true perfect paint job that you're going to be able to do that's ever going to stop this from happening and a lot of times depending on the type of paint that you use and the amount of preparation that you put into the paint job is whether or not how long that paint is going to last so as long as we understand that there is no like true permanent fix for this Obviously, the better paint that you use, the more paint that you put on there, the better preparation that you do, and the more effort you put into it, the longer it's going to last. If you're not going shallow and you're not getting into sand and grass and all these things that are going to wear the paint off the way this is worn off, then it's going to be worth it to spend the money to have it painted with a paint gun. So if you're going offshore and you're using your boat in really deep water where you don't really have the risk of running shallow and running stuff across the lower unit and scratching the paint off like this, then it might be actually worth going ahead and investing in an air gun and putting a more expensive premium marine paint that is built for metal and, you know, an outdrive stuff like that. But again, I know not everybody is going to need that situation. And so therefore I wanna show you how to do it with the cans. But when you think about it, when you're running the engine like this, it doesn't matter if you put the money into the air gun and you spray it with all grip or whatever, the paint is gonna wear off because of the way you're using the boat. So there is no permanent fix. And within one, two years, your, your paint's gonna to start to peel. So I just want everybody to understand that it depends on the way you use the engine and the lower unit and the conditions that it is ran in is going to also determine the longevity of the paint job and the paint of the lower unit. Because obviously, you know, you're going to paint this lower unit and if in two years the paint's coming off again, and you need to understand why that paint is coming off and that there is no permanent fix. I don't care if you take it to whoever and they seen it all the way down to bare metal and they use all grip and they use all this expensive paint and spray it and it's got 10 layers of paint on there. If you're running in sand and weeds and rocks and all that stuff, it's going to scratch off because it's, it's paint. So just have that in mind when you make your decision on painting the lower unit. But with that being said, you need to paint this. This should not be bare metal like this. This is very bad. It can cause you problems with corrosion, 
galvanic corrosion and other things like that because you have all this surface metal here in the water and with the dissimilar metals of the propeller, the prop shaft, this screw right here, the engine, the grounding of everything, it can cause you corrosion problems. So we do want to paint this. And since we are going to be using just a spray paint can, it is going to be very easy to do. There's not a lot to it. I mean, sanding and painting is sanding and painting. We're going to sand this entire thing. Preparation is the most important part of painting a lower unit because of the way you use a lower unit. Because of the condition, the water, the mile per hour that you run, the shallow that you run, um, the thicker the paint, the better it's gonna be, but you need to make sure that you're doing the right preparations of sanding it properly and making sure that you're painting it in the right intervals to make sure that the paint is adhering the best that it can. With that disclaimer, now we can actually get into the actual painting of the lower unit. So we need to make sure that we clean everything off, degrease everything, and get everything off that we don't want painted. Like this right here, we need to get the screen off because we don't want to paint that. We need to protect the water pump housing. We need to protect the prop shaft and all that stuff. But a lot of this is greasy, it's dirty, so we need to clean it. And then we're going to cover everything up with tape so that way we can sand it. Another thing that we want to make sure that we cover up is this right here. This is the pedo tube. So water is supposed to come into here. It flows up to this little nipple right here. And that is what goes to your gauge, which is how you get your speed on your gauge. Most people don't use that anymore because you have GPS. So this is pretty irrelevant in most cases, but it is just something to know about. So if you do use that, you do not want to paint this and cover that up. So we are going to be using painter's tape, stuff like that to cover these types of things. So if you do actually use this, you'll notice that a lot of times that it is clogged up with all kinds of junk. So now would be a good time to take a small drill bit and just kind of run that in there to get anything that's in there out. Not a lot of holes, not a bunch of stuff in this one, but once you get all this stuff out, you can then take something like contact cleaner, stick it down into here. If you don't have compressed air, if you have an air compressor, that's gonna be the better way to do it, but see all that stuff that came out? So there you go. Now you know that that is completely clean. We've got all the junk out of there and that will actually do what it is supposed to do to squirt it into a little tube here out there and it will come out. Now, with that done, we need to take our pickup screen off and we want to clean all this stuff off here. And the only reason we need to clean this off is because we want to cover it with painter's tape. You don't want to paint this shaft. You don't want to paint this. You don't want to get any paint on any of this other stuff because it will, you know, hold stuff. These right here are super important that you do not paint these either. So you'll notice there are two of these. Um, yes, we do grease these when you put the lower unit back on there, but the main prime function of these tabs is actually for a ground. So these tabs here, these little locating tabs are more for connecting the lower unit to the drive shaft housing and it allows it to have a good ground for the lower unit to the actual engine itself. So very crucial, these do not get painted. Um, and then also in here, this prop shaft. So on the prop shaft, you can see we have the prop shaft seal. Very important that that does not get painted and that the prop shaft doesn't get painted. What I like to do is take our paint. I'm gonna put it across here once we get everything cleaned up. Actually, let's just clean everything up. Once I get everything cleaned, I'll show you how to tape this off to make it easy on you. This is pretty much all that needs to be taped up. You know, none of the rest of this stuff really matters that much. Uh, it's just these tabs, the housing. I like to cover up this thing here because these are all the parts that need to come off. And that rubber piece right there, you want to keep that rubber um, without paint on it. So that way it gets you, gives you a good seal between the drive shaft housing to close off the exhaust from the water pump housing and, you know, a heat issue there. So now let's clean the... Um, prop shaft and the 
carrier here and we will tape all this off as well as take the screen off. So this is probably one of the more difficult things like here you need to really put the effort in to clean all this off because we need to sand all this and you don't want any kind of grease or dirt or anything in there because anywhere that you have grease, dirt or anything, the paint's not gonna stick. And anywhere we can't sand, the paint's not gonna stick. And those places are going to create a bubble and because of the way the lower unit works and the force of the water coming across here and being forced into here, that water is gonna work its way under the paint and then the paint is just gonna bubble and it will come off. So you will usually see peeling around this area right here if it is not prepped properly so you need to be thinking about that and getting in here to all these nooks and crannies so that way we can get in here and hand sand all this stuff pick out all this dirt and grime and all those you can see it built up there we need to get all that stuff off of there so when we do spray our paint the paint will stick Okay, so now we got our prop shaft covered up. I mean, I don't really like to paint inside here just because that spanner nut is supposed to come out. So I go ahead and just cover that up. Not a big deal, doesn't really matter. Biggest thing is prop shaft seal, prop shaft, no paint on that. Now this up here, same thing. Um, we're going to clean this out, but you don't really want to paint in here where the anode goes. It has already been painted. We might scratch this up a little bit, but really we're going to cover this up and we're not going to paint inside here. We're just gonna clean this up a little bit and then we'll be pretty much ready to start sanding and cleaning. The reason why you want to degrease everything first is because you don't want the chance of touching something that has any grease for one the tape will not stick to the grease so you clean everything so the tape will stick and then two you don't want any chance of any grease getting over and getting anywhere on this because if there's grease on the lower unit the paint will not stick so you spray these out with uh, contact cleaner to get those clean same thing here we need to anywhere there where there used to be grease we're going to clean those up really well and that way when we sand grease isn't in our sandpaper and clogging everything up just spreading grease all over it and then that way i mean we are going to wipe it down with acetone before we paint but the less grease the better so clean it as well as you can Now, this right here, you kind of use a pick to get into here to get these spots out, as well as using a brush like this can also be good to get those spots out of there, and it actually scrapes it as well as, um, you know, kind of gets the paint scraped up and gets all the dirt and stuff off, so these are not a bad thing to use, a little wire brush to kind of get into these little nooks and crannies, like up in here to get into there, get that nice and sanded and scratched up and get the dirt and grime and grease and all that stuff out of there. It's been caked on there for a long time. So nice 
nice tool to do. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and sand this whole thing, take it outside, sand it up in here where we can't get the sander. And then once this is all sanded, we will go ahead and prime it. We're going to be using a Quicksilver light gray primer, marine paint. Then we're going to be coming back with the Yamaha um, dark bluish gray. And then we're gonna to top it off with some clear coat. We're probably gonna do um, two to three coats of this two to three coats of this, and then two to three coats of this. So maybe nine coats in total, somewhere between six to nine coats. Again, depending on how thick you want it is gonna determine how you know good it's gonna be. It's better to do light coats opposed to heavy coats. And then also you want to do 30 minutes. So apply clear coat item number, 30 minutes after base color has been applied. So same thing, and then in between, release button after each stroke, dries to the touch in 20 minutes to handle in one hour and fully dry in 24 hours. Apply second coat within one hour or after 24 hours, otherwise paint might wrinkle or lift. So about every 20 to 30 minutes, you're going to want to apply your second coat, depending on how thick that you put it on. But again, lighter coats and more even lighter coats are gonna be better than one solid heavy coat. So I just use an orbital for the sanding. We just use an orbital sander. And um, I like 150. 150 seems to be the easiest. Um, if you don't feel as comfortable, you can use 220, depending on how much the sandpaper is cutting in. But 150 is good. You can also use like a, um, here is um, 100. So you can use a 100 grit. But, um, you know, that all depends on how comfortable you are with it. But, um, yeah, 150 is usually pretty good. Most of you are familiar with this process, but we are to the point where we have cleaned it with acetone, but now we need to go ahead and clean it again with acetone because we just moved it. You're gonna need to figure out something to hold this lower unit to where you can paint it. Um, I just cut a hole in a trash can just to keep it up for right now. But once we wipe it again down with acetone again, I'll probably spray in here with contact cleaner and then we will be able to wipe this down with tack cloth and put our first coat of primer on.
All right, here is our second coat of primer and that is looking really, really good. It filled in a lot of these um, marks, but there are still pretty deep scratches that probably aren't gonna fill, but the rest of this is laid up pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the last coat of primer and then we will start laying the paint. And this is basically three coats of the primer. There's a little bit over here that didn't get as much because of the can ran out, but now we are ready to go ahead and spray our paint onto the lower unit. Again, toothpick makes real good for that pedo hole. And here is our first coat of paint. Um, it looks pretty good for a first coat. I did get a little thick right there, but um, that is starting to look really good. As a, normally when you paint, you can always see these lines, but once it dries after your last coat, most of those blend right in. Now, I thought I had a full can of paint, but I think I only have enough to do two coats of the paint. So this is probably only gonna get two coats of paint and then we'll clear coat it. So this is still gonna look really good. I mean, look at this up here. That looks phenomenal for being what it is. One thing that you got to be careful about is that there's a little bit left in the can, but there's I need to stop putting it on there. So knowing when to stop spraying, even though you want to use the rest of the can, it is pretty 
well covered all the way around and I have nowhere else to use it so um, knowing when to stop I did get a little bit close right here that that spot right there was a little bit difficult to get into but other than that as long as that bug oh no look at that mosquito he's just crawling all over the paint he's gonna get into a wet spot and he won't be able to get out look at it a little rascal but that's looking really good looking really really good I might be able to probably hit the, the nose again a little bit in about 15-20 minutes because look you can already see these bugs all over this thing they're just walking all over the paint and I literally just sprayed that so it is definitely drying nice looking nice and um, yeah give this about 15-20 minutes and I'll probably use the very last little bit of that probably around the nose area maybe on the skeg just hit the skeg and then use that up and then we'll be able to clear coat okay now I think we are ready for our clear coat this looks really really good this is basically two three quarters coats um, it technically has three on there but um, a lot of the little nooks and crannies did not get a decent third coat it's all just a light light spray so now this is pretty much ready I'm going to go ahead and spray on the first coat of clear coat not a big fan of clear coat because this stuff can either go really really good or it can go really really bad it can discolor and it can cloud and it can crack so I'm always hesitant to clear coat but we're gonna go ahead and try it anyway That actually is looking really good. I mean, that clear coat came out really nice. Kind of a little bit of a problem with the bugs, but um, other than that, that's just because it's starting to get late in the day. But this is Molar Clear Coat Outboard and Stern Drive. There's the part number. And this seems to be working pretty good. It has, also has this nice spray tip that comes out in like a wide pattern. So that is also pretty nice but let me go ahead and hit this with a, another coat of clear coat and this is two coats of clear coat that thing is ridiculously shiny so we're going to go ahead and hit it with another coat now and I might be able to get a fourth coat of clear coat on there. It's actually looking really really good with that clear coat. It looks thick so let me go ahead and hit it with the third coat. Now here we are. This looks outstanding compared to what it was. I still need to take the tape and all that stuff off. We'll do that. I need to crack the drain screws and put the pickups back in there but um most of the scratches did get filled in. You can still see some of the deeper stuff, kind of hard in the angle because everything is so shiny, but there are, are a couple of spots where the metal is uh, a little bit dinged up still, but um, for the most part, this looks really, really good. And um, if you wanted to do more and you wanted to clean this up, you can fill all these scratches. You could use something like Total Boat um, or another type of body filling type of stuff, but this looks, really really good just a side note you do want to let this thing cure for 24 hours or you can wrinkle it so you see my little wrinkle mark right there so you definitely want to let it cure for 24 hours before you go moving it or else you will mess up the paint 